for net. And in the locker room, all eyes on the prize. Everything they've been working toward this season culminates tonight. That's a look at our setting tonight. The picturesque city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Welcome to the NBA playoffs here on 2K Sports. It's game five. I'm Kevin Harlan here with Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and our sideline reporter, the Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Tonight with us as well, the book of basketball author, Bill Simmons. Bill, great to see you. It's great to be here. Nobody is more impressed than my 11-year-old son, who can't believe that he's playing a video game and gets to hear my voice when he hears my voice just yelling at him. Or now he gets to hear me break down basketball. <laughs> but it's, it's kind wonderful. of fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he likes it. D.A., yeah. <laughs> take it away. Well, almost all of the Greek Freak's points come in the paint. Giannis said, I can already do a lot of damage, basically without a jump shot. Just driving, making plays, and free throws. When that jump shot comes, it's going to be a problem for a lot of players in this league. Kevin? <laughs> You're right, D.A. It'll be scary. Thanks. So the next starting five. Irving and Lavert are at the one and two. Jordan is out there with Jared Allen. And it's Durant in at the three slot. And for Milwaukee, Matthews and Middleton, the two wings. Giannis is the four with Lopez, the five. And it's Bledsoe in at the point. So the Bucks win the tip. The three. The rebound by the Nets. They won in their last outing. Saturday's game. And you know what? Sometimes it's hard to say whether or not defensively you were on your game. But the bottom line is their opponent didn't shoot it well and you got to take some of the credit from a defensive standpoint. No question about it, Greg. I mean, it's all about the results, right? And if you can limit open looks, sometimes you can get into an opponent's head. So even when they do spring free, they lack the confidence or at least are distracted and aren't able to knock those shots down. The impact of Eric Leitzel, his ability to penetrate and make plays at the rim. Let's talk about what he does for the Bucks offense and, and what you uh, think of his game. So he's interesting because during the regular season, he was great to the point that when they gave him an extension during last season, I actually thought it was really good. It was 70 million bucks. He was close to all-star Yeah, season, right? and he was really good defensively. I think the problem for him is the playoffs have become a different animal and they slow down. And he couldn't really adjust to that style. I thought he lost his confidence. It got to the point where they were just benching him for portions of quarters and must win games. So, you know, he's got to figure out how can he control a game offensively when it's not just like run and gun fast break? Because the style they played during the regular season was really good for him. Mm -hmm. They are just going. But in the playoffs, you can't do that. You're going to have games where it slows down. So how do you handle that, I think, would be the big thing. I thought he lost his confidence. Hamilton is most known, quite honestly, for his scoring ability. He's a sniper from outside that you can't afford to lose contact with. Now here's Jordan. The Nets taking the ball around now. Allen shot is off. Boy, that defense smothered him in there. Love the intensity. Floats it up for Giannis. Hammers the alley of crew. Love the read there from Antetokounmpo. I mean, his basketball IQ is really impressive when it comes to alley-oop attempts. Bill, if you were just hired as a GM, which franchise would you model your approach on? I really like what uh, the Clippers did the last couple of years when they realized they didn't have quite enough to win the title. And instead of just being beholden to being darn close but not quite, they actually, like, blew it up and tried to figure out how to create cap space, find some more players. And still stay competitive. Build so the they, they kept the momentum of their friends. Yeah. They, and they stumbled into a situation where they had a lot of flexibility no matter what. I think the Celtics before then did the same thing in the mid-2000s. They're just trying to find assets and figure it out on the fly. That's the approach I would use. I... I would never fully commit one way or the other to anything. The goal is to try to accumulate assets and figure out what you have. And I think the smartest teams do that. 
Now here's Giannis. Trying to get open is Lopez. I did the combo. No good. Nets trail by five. Levert the pass to Irving. Jordan against Matthews. Kept alive. A second chance effort and Jordan with the nice inside bucket. Yeah, Jordan is aggressive as a rebounder. He uses his massive time body, time athleticism, and long arms to wreak havoc on the glass. They'll name a couple past superstars that didn't always get enough credit for being as dominant as they were. Hey, Moses Malone would be my number one player. Probably the best player in the league for five years. Dominant in 83, they won the title in Philly. Really gave Kareem a lot of problems and was just awesome and has now just been swept under the rug. Nobody even really remembers. So I, never I would go with him first. Ever. Never. Well, it was part of the problem. They were tape delaying games back then and there wasn't, we didn't have league pass. We didn't have a lot of that stuff. I think he was really underrated and you kind of never know who's going to endure and who's not going to endure. Just one of the reasons I wrote my book. for Milwaukee and a new group in for the Nets. Wilson Chandler's checked in for Jared Allen. Torian Prince comes in for Kevin Durant. Joe Harris is checked in for Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie subbed in for Irving. Prince misses. Bucks leading by three. Connaughton passes to Lopez over Prince. Uses the glass that time and it's good. Bill defenders are doing a better job of challenging the shooter from the side so they don't foul and don't step into that landing space when it comes down from shooting. Yeah, I don't like the word the landing space, landing space. all that stuff. Like what would you call load it? management. We have all these phrases now. It's like, how did these phrases come in my life? Load management is interesting. Load management's the worst. <laughs> Where did that start? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Can we just play basketball? Oh, yeah, just like work. Yeah, just, just rest. Well, just what's the rest. thing they call when the, when the guy travels, but they say it's not? It's like he's gathering the ball. That's yeah. yeah he's gathering, not saying that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never said yeah. gathering <laughs> the ball in my life until two years ago. <laughs> Enough of the weird phrases. Yeah. And Tinwoody gets it to go on the assist by Prince. Dinwiddie's got five points so far. Hill kicks to Ilias Hope. Pass to Corver for three. The rebound by Prince. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Ops it up for Jordan. Takes the alley-oop pass and dunks it down. Yeah, you got to respect the athletic reach of Jordan now. Throw it up, and he will bash in the alley-oop. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Harris against Corver. The kick out to Hill. Five to shoot. A three. And out of bounds as the Nets gain possession. You know, I think he may have forced that pass when there was really no reason to. Here's Dinwiddie. And here's Prince outside. Tie game in Milwaukee. We'll get right back to the action when we return. And we're back for more exciting action from the Eastern Conference semifinals. And look what we've seen from Milwaukee. What do you think, guys? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Yeah, you know, I agree. No warm-up needed. They came in on fire and have already built a nice lead. And so it's Dinwiddie who brings up the ball for the Nets. You've been producing documentaries going deeper into athlete stories, which I know you love, because I think you're curious more than anything else. Yeah. So, so what drew you to that process? Initially, it was uh, we dove into these stories. We thought that was the inefficiency of instead of these big, broad type of documentaries, concentrate on events and players and moments and things like that. And I think as you get into that and you start doing it, it just becomes intoxicating. The cool thing about it is no story should be told 
the same way you would tell somebody else's story. You just don't know. You get to figure it out. Like we had Steve Nash's last Lakers season. He wanted to do a documentary about it. And then we spitballed it, and we decided it was actually a better idea to do an in-the-moment digital series about it that you could experience in real time than you think. And it was the right idea, and that was really good. I think trying to figure out what story clicks the best with an athlete, I tell whatever story they have correctly is the coolest part of it. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play on the court for the Bucks. Kyle Korver is out there with Hill. Then it's Ilyasova. Then there's Robin Lopez. And it's Connaughton in at the three, the small forward. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. And Bill, when you yourself get out on the court, is there a play you try to channel or emulate, try to visualize in your mind? You mean when I'm playing pickup? Yes, yes. Oh, well, now, at this point in my life, I... It's Davos Bertans. Is that how you say his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Davos Bertans. Davos Bertans? Yeah, yes. By the way, what I, a great stroke. I, mean, I emulate all stretch fours. Yes. Yeah. That's the way I am at this point in my life. I run from three-point line to three-point line. You stay in the perimeter. Yeah. Don't don't tangle up inside. My free throw attempts are zero because yep. I don't go to the line. Just fire away. And I just, I want you to know I'm there to make an open jump shot. <laughs> and don't ask me to do anything else, please. I'll set some picks. Uh, yeah. You are. You do you're a great speed. I'll set some picks. You do a great pick and roll. Matthews has a nice feel, guys, for when a teammate has a clean look, gets him the ball. Irving dishes to Hayes. The eight footer. Again, the Nets for two. And, and he has really come to life here after a slow start in that first quarter. Bounce pass from Bledsoe. And so onto the Kubo looking over it. And another basket for Milwaukee. Boy, the added work in the weight room for Giannis coming into play there. I mean, you got to send an army to try to stop this guy. Bill, you wear so many hats, writing, producing, performing, You're running the ringer, which is highly successful. What role satisfies you the most? I would say working with young people and trying to help them get better. Hmm. I think that's the coolest thing you can do, especially if you feel like you've done some good stuff and accomplish some things and realize some dreams like the next thing to do is just to can you help other people get to where they should be well a lot of this wasn't around when you and i were growing up so no. what were your dreams my dream initially was just to write a sports column that people read that's and it's what cool. i wanted forever yeah and then um, the most satisfying thing is just not knowing what's next but taking chances and hoping things are going to be fun and work out mm -hmm. You have to have a good team around you, and you have to have, like, six or seven awesome people that you completely trust who can help you do stuff because it's impossible to do everything yourself, especially if you're trying to increase the scale of what you're doing. And I think that even works for an NBA organization. You know, it's not like one person running everything. I would say putting a good team around you is the most important thing. Now, here's Irving, following the miss by Giannis Antetokounmpo. Durant, the pass to out. The Nets need to get a shot off here. Irving for three, and there's the call on Durant. That is his first foul of the game. Milwaukee's gone one or two on three pointers here in the second quarter so far. And Matthews kicks to Bloodsoe. Onto the Kumbo trying to free himself up. And Lopez throws it down. Because of that big body and seven foot frame, Lopez a handful to keep off the glass. For Brooklyn, they've gone five and six or five in the field in the second quarter. And the first timeout called of the game for Brooklyn. You have to like what we're seeing from Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, he's getting to the rack all game, and if they can't do a better job of keeping him out of the paint, they're in for a long night. Seven left to play in the first half. Irving passes to Dinwiddie. That shot is off. Good D by Lopez. And.
Middleton kicks to Bledsoe. And the dunk by Giannis. You know, Bledsoe has developed his passing skills to the point where you've got to respect that part of his game. He's doing a nice job finding his open guy. Well, Bill, I know you've got to run. Marvelous to have you on the program. Wish we could do it more often. Let's do it right now. I don't have to run. Can you I stay? Yes, you can All always right. stay. I don't want to leave. You have a free out. ticket here I, anytime I, I you want. I want to stay, please. The microphone's Clark. always open. Thank you. <laughs> And Clark, you know what? Bill will always give you a great point of view. And you know what? I think he needs his own barbershop talk show, Kevin. I mean, he's done everything else in media. Go barbershop on him, Bill. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. Yeah, typically there's some type of adjustment made out of a timeout. It might be major or it could be just a slight tweak. changes. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for Allen. Chandler comes in for Kevin Durant. And it's Prince in for Karis LeVert. Here's Connaughton. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Here's Lopez. Great D that time from Jordan. And the activity he shows around the rim is why he is such a respected defender. And you know what? He's not going to give up an easy finish at the rim. I mean, that's just a against his constitution. Six to shoot. Irving misses. And the rebound battle split evenly thus far. Yeah, tit for tat on the glass. Just one more aspect of what's been a very closely contested ball game here. And so the ball out of bounds. Jordan touched it last. <laughs> There's 18 seconds left here in the second. Here's Connaughton. Clock at four. From the arc. Good on the three-point shot. Connaughton's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. Irving way outside. And no luck with that time on the buzzer beater. And that's it for the first half of action. What's been a very close game here. Bucks ahead. Ending the second quarter on a 14 to 6 run. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Here with Chris Middleton. Chris, a big effort from you guys in the first half. How do you keep that momentum going? Come out with energy, you know, just try to keep pushing the ball and uh, just stop. We know that's coach's emphasis, Chris. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, y'all. We're reporting to you live here in the sold-out arena. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. Well, for the Bucks, they have yet to take control of this series or the game. We know the team that wins game five of a series that's tied 2-2 is often the one to advance, so they need to be at their best in the second half. Kenny, your thoughts on the Bucks' first half? Well, I see a team that's playing smart, moving the ball around to the open man, just taking what the defense gives them. There's a nice flow, a nice energy, a nice synergy to the game. And over to the big fella, your thoughts on the Nets? Well, I'll tell you what I saw in the first half, Ernie. Three things. Saw defense, not enough pressure, but they can still win this game. They need to ramp it up. Is that two or three? It doesn't matter. You understand, Ernie. And that wraps up the halftime show. Third quarter set to begin in just a few. And you are back with us live as we bring you continuing coverage of the Eastern Conference semifinal. You have to like what we're seeing from Giannis Antetokounmpo. You just love the patience in that first half. Waited until he got the look he wanted. Well, you know what, guys? It was all about efficient offense, not rushing things. Taking your time, finding the best shot on every possession. So glad to have you with us here as we bring you more action from courtside at game five. Setting the floor for the Nets. Levert and Durant out on the perimeter. Jared Allen is out there with Jordan. 
and it's Irving at the one. Now here's Bledsoe, following the miss by Kyrie Irving. And Bledsoe, here we go, uses the glass to finish the layup. Bledsoe's got the first points of the second half here for the Bucks. Levert the pass to KD. Antetokounmpo pulls it in. Starting slow in this half. 0 for 3 so far. Offensive rebound. And it's in. Basket number 6 for him thus far. He has only missed two shots from the floor. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Yeah, I think they've got to ramp up the aggressiveness, Greg. I mean, if they don't, things are just going to get worse from here. There it is. The first basket of the half after missing their first three attempts. Pass to Middleton. Fires the three. Brooklyn with the rebound. Third quarter of basketball. About a minute and a half in. Irving kicks to KD. From past the arc. Pass to Levert. Outside Durant. In the corner. Irving with it. Let's a floater go. Here's Allen. And it's Allen slamming it down. Well, you see the hustle from Allen there, guys, and his relentlessness and the mindset to keep at it really allows him to gobble up those offensive boards. Now here's Giannis. He's got 12. And he did everything he could to make that shot as difficult as possible. And you know what, guys? That will pump him up because he takes a ton of pride in what he does on defense. Here's Durant. Some solid defense from Kumbo. Well, I admire the fact he's trying to power through this rough stretch, but on occasion you'll have periods like this. And Matthews gets it to go. Man, nice to watch Matthews rise up with confidence, Kevin. Superb timeout, timeout. for getting good position close to the rim. Timeout called the Nets. here for the Bucks. Ilyasova comes in for Brook Lopez. And it's Corver in for Matthews. And then for Brooklyn, Joe Harris comes in for DeAndre Jordan. And Spencer Dinwiddie subbed in for Irving. Yeah, and Durant has just such a fluid release. Very efficient shooting the ball from that mid-range. Count it. Good. 14 points for Giannis out of the combo. At the offensive end, he's been assertive and efficient, guys. A big reason why they hold this lead right now. Dinwiddie with the bucket. Hey, props to Dinwiddie there. I mean, Spencer, the closer he gets to the rim, the more dangerous he is. Ludzo passes to Ilya Sopa. Durant with the steal. For the tie, they get it back. L goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. Now just a one-point Bucks lead. And the combination of his quickness and soft touch around the rim really allows him to pull off shots like that. A lot of players don't have the reverse in their arsenal. Not lacking confidence in the scoring ability inside. Bledsoe knows he can do damage from there. Stolen by Bledsoe. out of bounds. Milwaukee will retain possession. A different look for Milwaukee. Lopez, he's checked in front of Kumbo. Pat Connaughton comes in for Chris Middleton. And George Hills subbed in for Eric Bledsoe. Wilson Chandler's checked in for the Nets. Torian Prince comes in for Karis LeVert. Lopez outside. Lock at six. The pass to Connaughton. He feeds it to Ilya Sova. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. Ilya Sova's got his second basket of the night. Harris outside. Dinwiddie outside. Allen misses to Dinwiddie. 
banked in off the glass. Dinwiddie's got nine. Boy, it's so difficult to corral Dinwiddie, even when you get physical with him. He finds a way to power through. Hill against Dinwiddie. Right side Hill. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. It's on Jared Allen. Nice job that time from Hill drawing the foul. His quick release is really hard to catch up with on defense. Shoot two. And he makes the first. And Hill is really kind of a nice, subtle mix of explosiveness and outstanding defense. A guy who plays both ends of the floor with equal efficiency and effectiveness. Matthews, he's checked in for the Bucks. Both free throws good from Hill. Nets trail by five. Dinwiddie outside. Pass to Prince. Kicks it out to Dinwiddie. It's stolen by Corbett. Pick up the pace. Get the two for one here. That's the way to go. Be quick about it. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. That is the perfect fast break, guys. Getting a hoop before the defense can get set. The Bucs shooting their fourth shot at the foul line here. And Brooklyn making a change here. Jordan's checked in. Let's shot. We've got 28 seconds left in the third. Harris against Corver. Harris kicks to Chandler. Dishes it to Dinwiddie. Five on the clock. Excellent D there from Hill. Outside Corver. And no good on the last second attempt this time. And so it's Milwaukee. Holding on to an eight-point lead, heading into the break. They're playing a bruising game inside, and it's working for them. Back to the action after this word. Let's listen in on what Mike Budenholzer had to say to his team in the huddle. Do it again for this quarter. 0-0. Zero, zero. Same effort, same mentality. Keep pushing it. Keep moving the ball. Now Mike likes how they're working the ball right now. And, you know, Coach highlighted it's a brand new quarter. They need to play with the same fire. Fourth quarter of action is upon us. Thanks, as always, for joining us. They've got Hill. Kyle Porter is out there with Elias Oka. Then it's Matthews, and it's Lopez in at the five, roaming the paint. That's the five on the floor for the Bucks. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take it there. Now, here's Dinwiddie. Irving attacking. Good work there as it goes. Irving's got his first two points of the night. Yeah, you know, you got to appreciate the speed of Kyrie Irving. I mean, incredible at finding different ways to get to the basket, and he is not afraid of anybody. Now, here's Lopez. Comes up empty down low. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. He's been ice cold tonight. And, you know, you look at the scoreboard guys, they really could have used his contribution. Moving against Corver. This is it to Hill. to the inside. Lopez with the bucket. Hill is difficult to guard in pick and roll sets because of his shooting, speed, and his passing ability. I mean, it's basically pick your poison with him. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now, you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Timeout called the Nets.
third substitution here for Milwaukee. Lopez, he's checked in for Lopez. Antetokounmpo comes in for Ilyasova. Chris Middleton's checked in for Kyle Korver. Eric Bledsoe is subbed in for Hill. The Nets also changing it up. Kevin Durant comes in for Wilson Chandler. And it's Levert in for Spencer Dinwiddie. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Thanks, Kevin. Kenny Atkinson had some words for his team during the break. His emphasis was for more effort on the defensive end. He said, we have to do a better job of communicating and helping each other out. They're getting too many easy looks. Let's make it hard on them. Kevin, they're going to have to if they're going to slow down the hot shooting of their opponent. And now we'll get a perspective here on how the hustle game has been going for the Bucks. Defensively, they played with a lot of energy, and the steals we've seen are a result of that aggressiveness. Another part of their game that's made a difference tonight is all the second chance points they've been able to get. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, Greg, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. They've got to offer more resistance here. technical free throw is good and Durant finally captured that elusive first championship in 17 and the finals MVP trophy to boot an effortless scorer who has also made great strides defensively Allen's checked in for Brooklyn now here's Durant Antetokounmpo pulls it in Antetokounmpo's got rebound number seven for him tonight. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. Really, you know what? Trying to keep Antetokounmpo off the glass, that's a tough assignment because he's long and he can leap. Here's Irving. And the rebound goes to Lopez. Lopez has got six rebounds in the game. Once so, taking his time here. Rebound, Brooklyn. Jordan's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Pass to Irving. Comes past Levert. Inside. Here's KD. That shot missing. Great D that time for Middleton. Here's onto Takumbo. And Giannis throws it down. I tell you what, it's absolutely foolish and futile to let Anta Takumbo get space to sprint towards the rim. I mean, the dunks he jams home are just downright filthy, ugly, nasty, wicked. Timeout called the Nets. They're trailing by 15. There's 154 left in the fourth quarter. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's put on a shooting exhibition for us here tonight. He's missed a couple along the way, but it sure seems like everything been falling for him. The only way to keep him from converting is to keep the ball out of his hand. With a chance to take command in the series, he did everything. That is the kind of killer instinct you need in the playoffs. Lopez finds Giannis. And that one, good. Late in the game, up big, they continue to attack. I don't think you want to get loose and sloppy or ease up, but it is time for them to start using that clock a bit. On the free throw, no good. You know, what you really like about Antetokounmpo is he wants to keep getting better. I'd say he's accomplished that and then some. Yeah, and that was lining up to be a huge alley-oop, but they just couldn't quite connect. And you know, guys, always a tough catch on the lob. Placement and timing have to be close to perfect. The shot, no good. And Brooklyn will come the other way. And guys, that's just about going to do it here for game five. Always pivotal. And now we look ahead to a critical game six, but a huge win tonight for the Bucks. They never settled for mediocre shots. And Kevin, they had great penetration this time out. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, 
Just a monster game for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Boy, from a scoring standpoint, he was absolutely sensational. Made the game look easy tonight. Here's Levert following the basket by Brooke Lopez. Levert kicks to Irving. Lent it go with a three. Matthews with the rebound. And there have been some terrible shot choices here, Kev. That's not a good look at all. Bledsoe passes to Giannis. Vader on the way. Good, and Bledsoe gets the assist. And the Bucks lead by 19. And credit the whole team. It was a focused, concerted effort to put this one away. Yeah, what a time to put the hammer down. Any hope of a comeback diminished. It, it really does make the game easy for your teammates when you can lead them to the rim that well with the pass. So no problem for Milwaukee as they get the win. This was a pivotal game in the series so far, and they were able to keep their heads great, get the job done, and take the all-important three games to two lead. Now they can breathe yeah, right. just a little bit easier oh, knowing goodness. they're just one win away from closing this thing out. Had they lost this game, the pressure on them would have been huge. Oh, just gigantic. You're right. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Brooke, congrats on the win. What is your team's focus right now? You know, we were taking it one game at a time. We knew we had to come in here, uh, get a win. We knew our crowd was going to support us. It was going to be easy. And now we got to focus on our next game on the road. You know, and it's all about staying together. Well, we'll see if you can take that with you on the road. Congrats again. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. That'll do it for this broadcast of the NBA Eastern Conference Semifinals. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for being with us. So long and good night, everyone.